What's up guys, it's Japes and this is going to be episode 4 of FIFAnomics, but before we get started here, big thanks uh, to all of you guys that have subscribed, 1,000 subscribers is just absolutely crazy to me, um, and it's, it's I don't even know what to say, it's just wild, but um, thanks to FIFA Gaming HD also for posting my last 10k power hour video, hope you guys enjoyed that and you're coming over here for some more tips on FIFA 11 Ultimate Team. So let's get started guys, right now what I have uh, essentially is uh, what was my Liga Portuguesa side, but now I'm kind of turning it into a Portuguese League, uh, Liga do Brasil hybrid team uh, with Rafael So Beast up top. Um, I know his name is So Beast, but for me, he plays like an absolute beast, so I call him Rafael So Beast. Um, and this man right here, Leandro Lima, probably my favorite favorite bra silver he's got five star skill moves and these stats are an absolute lie guys if you have a spare four or five k i'd say definitely go check him out pick him up he will be a great little signing for you another quick tip guys uh if you see on my subs bench guys i have a bunch of like paladino here obviously isn't brazilian he doesn't play in liga portuguesa so why would i have him on my subs bench uh, that's just because every time that I put him into the game, guys, he goes into that game with nine chemistry, guys. Your subs bench chemistry does not matter. You could have them in any formation that you wanted, and you could put them in wherever you wanted, guys, and they're going to play to their utmost nine chemistry potential. Just a quick tip, guys, because uh, all that the game takes into account is your player's uh, starting chemistry going into the game, and since your bench doesn't have a starting chemistry... Frankly, it doesn't matter when you sub them in. So guys, moving on to what we're talking about, and that's going to be how to create demand for your players in FIFA 11 Ultimate Team. Ooh. Uh, actually, guys, I think I'm going to take this trade offer for my 4-3-3 Danny, who I bought for 65k earlier uh, today. I'm Manuel Neuer, I'm pretty sure I can sell him for at least 60k, and I should be able to sell Kiesling for about 15k, guys, and they're in the most highly desirable formation in the game, and that's a 4-1-2-1-2, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that trade offer. So that's done with for that. So moving on to how I create demand, guys. As you can see, all of these guys are 4-3-3 Liga Portuguesa players. I've got two Lietzins, two Rolandos, and three Alvaro Pereiras. Um, fun fact about Rolando, he's not actually from Portugal. He's from uh, Cape Verde, uh, which is an island off of the west coast of Africa, I believe. But that's neither here nor there, guys. So what we're, uh, we're going to talk about is... What I've done is, since I've had this Liga Portuguesa side for a couple days, I've become really familiar with the pricing of the informed players within that league. And so every time that I see one for a price that I know I can turn a profit on, I'll go ahead and pick them up, guys. And I'll sell them one at a time, guys. This increases demand for the players. I would recommend you do this with... Whatever league and whatever formation you use for your team. And guys, if you have informed players, learn the pricing of those players like the back of your hand. And check the market constantly. You know, Check it every two games that you play or check it after every game. There's no harm, no foul in that. Um, and if you do that, you'll be able to pick up uh, pretty solid deals on your players, guys. And so if once, and I just happened to pick up, so for Pereira here, I've just happened to pick up three of them because there were three for prices that I like. I actually have four because there's one in my squad. And guys, I'll sell those off. Off one at a time now guys this increases demand because you're not flooding the market and I know personally for me if I see someone with like three Pereiras listed I'm gonna be like screw you I'm not making or I'm not giving you some profit and I'm gonna go I'll buy one from someone who's just got one listed for a little bit more but guys you can avoid this by just listing one at a time guys so half the time the 433 there aren't loads of informed Liga Portuguesa players in that formation always and so if I list one at a time for slightly inflated prices guys I'm going to turn a really good profit. What I mean by slightly inflated is that they are on average just a little bit more than what that average card would go for because they're in a formation that's semi-expensive. Guys, a 433 card on average goes for at least 5,000 coins, probably more like 7,000. And so people don't want to buy formation cards if they don't have if they don't have to they just want to buy that player in their formation. And so guys, by releasing just one at a time, they're more than likely to do this. Uh, or more than likely to buy my player for even a slightly inflated price. But anyways, guys, this is Japes. This has been Fifanomics Episode 4, How to Increase Demand on Some of Your Cards. Uh, if you guys like my videos, guys, give it a thumbs up. It's really encouraging. Uh, thanks for coming to check out my channel, guys. I really appreciate all you guys subscribing. It's really, really encouraging for me. Uh, but other than that, guys, I just thanks for watching, and I hope these tips are helping.